I don't mind before. you eating. <laughs> so, Are you kidding? <laughs> um, everybody good here? Everybody you expect to be here here? Yeah. Okay, let's kick this puppy off. Uh, hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Busy time of the year. A lot of stuff going on. You spent chose to spend 30 minutes of your life coming in here. 45. <laughs> and supporting Cheyenne Myers we celebrate her pathway and journey to be prepared to make a positive difference in the lives of youth and agriculture. Uh, to bring it all together, to answer those three questions. Who does she expect to be as a teacher? What does Miss Myers mean? Well, what opportunities has she done to push herself that's going to translate to helping students as an educator? And finally, how is she specifically prepared to go work with Abigail Cornett, Penn State graduate 2010, uh, from our teacher certification program at Kennedale High School? And I think we're all excited to learn with you and from you through this process. At the end, we'll go through a question about 15 minutes. We'll start the live audience. So coach yourselves up, be thinking. I might call on you. I do that occasionally. So I have a question ready to go. We'll go to our online audience. We are Facebooking this. I think we live streaming it. And we have a Zoom audience that's a building. And then the teacher education panel. So without further ado, Cheyenne, we're excited to be here with you. Let's learn. Awesome. So I just want to take a minute and say thank you. Everybody that is in this room has helped change me and make me into the person I am today and has gotten me to this point through support. So I just want to thank you all for being here and taking time out of your finals week. I know everybody wants to go home. So we're just going to start and we're going to talk about my road traveled and where I'm going down this road and path that we're on for Penn State Ag Education 18. So who is Miss Myers is the first question I'm going to ask myself. And we're going to go over, like Dr. Foster said, who I aspire to be as a teacher, my experience that I've had to get me here, and my cooperating center, and where I'm going to go. So first I want to talk about my teaching philosophy. So this is kind of what I believe in, how I feel that I want to run my classroom and how I want to be presented in a classroom. Um, so first I want to talk about the three circle model for those that don't know. Um, in an ag education program we incorporate the three circle model which is classroom instruction, FFA, and SAE. So we'll talk a little bit more about each of those components later. Um, I also picked this quote about be the role model you needed when you were younger and I really enjoy this quote because I think it's really true. I mean I like the, the role models I had when I was younger and I would like to be to give back to those um, the youth like the way I was given when I was um, in school. So I think it's really important to have strong role models and I aspire to be a strong role model for the students that I will have um, in the future not just student teaching. I also want to be a facilitator. I don't want to be the one that lectures all the time. I understand that there are going to be some, some times that we need to get that information through to those students, but I don't want to just stand up here and talk like I am today. I'd like to be able to give them hands-on experience, get them out in the field if at all possible, go on field trips, let them see things and from a different aspect, from a different view, rather than just sitting in their classroom or writing a pencil down. So when you look at it, do you really want to see a classroom like this, where you're professor's just writing on the board, you're not really doing anything, you don't get to get any hands-on experience, or your students are disengaged, they're sleeping, they're not paying attention, they don't want to be there. Or do you want to see a classroom like this, where you get to work in a greenhouse, these kids did vet science, they actually got to wrap a goat, they got to do things um, after they learned in the classroom, they got to go and practice it. So you really just got to think about what you want in your classroom. The next I want to talk about classroom management, if I can direct your attention over to the side. I have three posters, and <clears throat> these posters at the beginning of the semester we are asked to think about what our expectations were when we're in a classroom, how we're going to run our classroom, and the consequences that we'll have. Now the consequences that I'll have based <clears throat> are based from Kennerdale's uh, book and how Kennerdale runs their classroom and their systems um, for their consequences. My classroom procedures, on the other hand, um, I want to be able to have the students be ready to come to class. I want them to be excited to be in class. I want them to be there, be present. So my first is to arrive on class on time. I want them to be there on time, be excited to be there, and be ready to go when I'm ready to start class. My second one is to begin the bell work. So every day I am going to strive to have bell work for my students. It's going to be up on the board when I get there. 
class before, depending, making sure that everybody's cleaning up in the class before. But I want them to be able to know that when they come in, they sit down, they're going to get their little book and they're going to write their bell work out. And they're going to be able to have that prepared and ready to go so we can go over when we start class. My third one is to turn in all assignments. Kennerdale, Miss um, Abigail Cornett, my cooperating teacher, she has nice folders set up so that way they can turn in assignments or get assignments that if they were late the day before, absent the day before, that they can get. I think that's very important and I would like to strive to use that when I am student teaching or in a classroom of my own. Um, the next one is to engage in a lesson. I don't want you to sit there and just not be engaged or actively listening to the lesson that I'm presenting um, or giving you the opportunity to participate in. So I think that's really important to be able to learn and be able to um, soak up the information. And I also want them to leave without questions. So every day we're going to do a ticket out. If they have questions, they're going to put the questions on ticket out and we're going to take care of those before they leave or I'm going to have them do that overnight and when they come back they can tell me what they think about it the next day. The next one, the last one I had was classroom expectations. So when I thought about this, um, I had talked to some people about setting up my classroom expectations. And I feel that it is important for me to have classroom expectations, but I think it's also important to ask your students what their expectations are of the class. So while my expectations are to be safe, be prepared, be respectful, be engaged, and be you, they need to be themselves in the classroom. I'm also going to sit down on the first day of class when I get there, or even the second day, depending on how I want to start it out and ask those students to brainstorm, come up with ideas. What do you expect from this class this semester? What do you want to see? What do you want to have done? Because it's important to me for them to have ownership of something. And I think if they have ownership, they're going to be much more willing to be engaged into that presentation. So I think that that's really important and that's what I'm going to strive for to talk to my students about in the spring. So next I'm going to go to the model program. Um, <clears throat> my model program that I'm going to strive to try to achieve, I personally believe that I would be comfortable in a multi-teacher program. Um, I know that I'm not always the strongest when it comes to ag mechanics. Dr. Ewing can tell you about that. Um, I'm also not the strongest when it comes to horticulture and, and different things that have to do with that aspect. I'm working on them. We're getting stronger with them. But then I know that that's not my strong point. My strong point is animal science and leadership. So so my model program would have a teacher that would be able to be comfortable with ag mechanics, teacher that would be able to be comfortable with horticulture, teacher with animal science, with leadership. I think it's really important to have a well-rounded education for these students so they can pick and choose where they want to go, which pathway they want to go to, and where they want to be. They are going to be able to get different, um, excuse me, different educational sources where they can pick and choose and then maybe they can be able to decide a career out of those events. So my model program would be sure to have a leadership development class or an FFA class depending on um, how we would work that into the curriculum, an equine science class, and an ag mechanics class. When you talk about 350 project, there's a lot of things that come to mind. To give you guys a background, um, AE 350 was our shop class. Um, it was very cool to be able to get some hands-on experience with metal, some woodworking, um, and <clears throat> all the different components that we can get with that. So I actually made a project in shop, and the shop class that we made, um, a clamp. And then we were asked to go home and create a project that was $15 or under. And I made a um, paper towel rack out of horseshoes. And I actually learned how to TIG weld to do that. So I took some outside time and was able to broaden my horizons from the welding that we have learned in 350 to be able to figure out where I want to go or what I think is easiest and get some more experiences for when I student teach. Um, I think that being able to create a project like that <coughs> is very helpful. And it also gives the students a time to be unique and create I made it that way, but there's no reason why you can't do that with one shoe or two shoe or have a different base. So the kids can really um, figure out how they want to make it, figure out what they, materials they want to use and how they want to incorporate that into their, their time spent in class. So SAE, I had mentioned this earlier, is a supervised agricultural experience. And I think this is highly important. I did an SAE um, with my horses when I was in high school. Um, and SAE is, is super important in my aspect. It gives the students the time to take what they have learned in the classroom, through FFA, through their experiences, and be able to put it into something that they want to work and strive for. So they're really going to be able to 
take pride in their skills that they have learned. All these words on this um, little picture are really crucial to when it comes to SAE and I think it's important to be able to incorporate that and engage your students in um, be encouraging and supportive and really enthusiastic about letting them try what they want to try. Let me talk about FFA. And I also believe that FFA is highly important. I wore the blue and gold jacket when I was in high school, and it's definitely brought me out of my shell a little more and um, turned me into the person I am today. And I think it's really important um, that FFA has a little bit of everything for everybody. So if you want to do career development events, which are um, like a competition for the kids that are in FFA, they can go and do that. And there is highly different ones, all the way from um, public speaking, to a communication, a prepared speech, to animals, whatever you want to go in, there's probably something for that student for them to try. And a lot of them can strive good at it. And if they don't like that one, they can do something different the next year. It also gets them those um, life learning skills, um, being able to talk in front of people, being able to show people what they really enjoy. Um, it's really helpful. So we got to do this fun little thing, and I um, am very appreciative of Rose Cowan because she recorded her voice for um, our recruitment video. She helped, <coughs> we did a lot with this, um, but she really had the idea of, oh, well everybody likes Paul Harvey, so um, for those that know um, the on the eighth day, God made a farmer, so we kind of did something like that, and I'll let you watch and learn for yourself. Eighth day, the IT teacher looked out at the empty classroom and said, I need to grow the next generation of agricultural lists. So long, he and I have students. The teacher said, I need somebody excited to come to agricultural classes, practice for career development events, develop a supervised agricultural experience, go to FFA meetings, and go home and come back to do it all over again. So long, he and I have students. I need somebody strong enough to work with animals, and yet gentle enough to care for plants. Somebody to conduct experiments, rebuild engines, weld, and be a servant leader in the community. So along came my students. The teacher said, I need somebody willing to work hard at all they do, and sometimes fail. Then dry their eyes and say, how can I improve for next time? Somebody who will plow deep and straight and not cut corners. I need somebody who thinks outside the box and is willing to try something new. So long, KMAC students. The ag teacher had to have somebody eager to develop leadership skills by engaging in FFA events and gain career skills by participating in placement, research, and entrepreneurship work-based learning experiences. So long, KMAC students. The teacher said, I need somebody who wants to travel and network with professionals with students from all over the nation who will represent themselves and their school with pride. Somebody who wants to grow in their knowledge of science and agriculture and make friends who are interested in the same. Somebody who helped bail the community together with soft, strong bonds of friendship and in time, graduate high school prepared to continue their journey as a leader and make a positive impact in society. So along came an accident. Agriculture needs you. The world needs you. Come join our agriculture program. Contact Ms. Myers or Ms. Cowan to learn more. So that was our recruitment video, and I thought it was really cool. Um, we pulled pictures together of all of our cohort and their students that they had um, through different experiences that they had through either National FFA Convention or um, when they went to visit their cooperating centers. So we really pulled together everybody from our cohort because it's all stuff that's important to us. So we were asked to do a community-based unit of instruction. And with that came a lot of difficult um, ways to think about how are we going to get the community involved or how can we get the students more involved with the community around us. Um, I'm fortunate to be going back to my hometown and when I was talking to Miss Abby Cornett, we were talking about how can, what can we teach, what can I teach that the students can take back and teach to their community. So we decided that vet science um, would be a good way to incorporate this. 
more importantly, we talked about giving injections. And I also am doing a unit on um, teaching people how to wrap legs with horses because I have an equine science course as well. So I decided that I'm going to bring in a guest speaker, most likely a vet or a vet technician, and they're going to be able to talk to the students about the importance of vaccines and why it's important to vaccinate your animal. Um, in all aspects of that. I also decided then that we're going to do some hands-on experience which at Nashville last week I went to a workshop and um, it was based on veterinary science and it was um, giving you cheap ways or more financially better ways to get material to be able to teach your students this. So I have an orange picture up there because most times teachers use oranges to um, explain and demonstrate to their students how to give injections. I'm actually going to probably use a water bottle with sand in it with a dish rag over top of it. It's a little cheaper. The sand doesn't um, wear out. But these students are going to learn this, um, these couple lessons and when they think that they're um, coherent enough, they understand it, they really are starting to learn it to the point that they can demonstrate it themselves. They're going to go to um, we're going to create like an ag day for the middle school ag program and they're going to teach it to the middle school kids. I also was thinking outside the box because a lot of our students, most of our students and some of them are 4-H um, members and they have to do a county speak out night in our um, county so they can go and do that as their demonstration or take it back to their 4-H club and demonstrate to their club how to give injections. So that is our community involvement and how we can teach the community. So next we're going to talk about my experiences. And I really like this quote that says, nothing teaches us better than our own experiences. So I really feel this is important, especially when I um, walked into shop class, being able to do the things hands-on by myself, figuring them out. It was a struggle every now and then, but we got there. And I think it's really important for the students as well. Their experience is going to teach them different things that us as teachers might not even be able to explain to them. So. Key courses that I had here at Penn State, of course my AE courses, 100 we um, got to learn about teaching philosophy. Um, I actually had to, um, got the privilege of taking my 100 course with Dr. Rice and she really broadened um, the teaching idea to me. Um, I was very set on being an agriculture and extension educator which might still be the road that I go down but at this point my mind is more open to being able to teach and going into the classroom and really having a structured, um, more formal way of teaching someone. So thank you, Dr. Rice, for that. Going on to AE 295, we did these things called discipline derbies. And they sound interesting and they're fun, but we get this packet from Dr. Foster and it gives us a scenario and it tells us, you know, this student is doing such and such, how would you handle it? So we took time and we got to write down of our ideas and what we thought and we got to bounce it off our cohort. And there's ideas that come up that you don't necessarily think of yourself and you can put it in your back pocket to think of later on, which I highly appreciate because there's some situations that you just kind of sit and you think, well, I'm not exactly sure how I'd do that. So being able to bounce off your cohort is definitely helpful. Also, the experience of Dr. Foster helps a lot, so thank you for that. And then we go on to shop, which I've talked about numerous times. And um, Dr. Ewing knows that um, metal and welding was not exactly my greatest attribute when we started, but I got there and it made it a little easier. And I also learned how to work in different kinds of shops. And I have to teach a carburetor unit in the spring, um, which will be definitely interesting. But I, working with small gas engines in 350 really helped me think about how can I really tear this carburetor apart and how can I really teach it. So that was helpful. Thank you, Dr. Ewing. Then we went into AE 412, which again is with Dr. Foster. And we learned how to <coughs> manage a classroom. How do we instruct the classroom? How do we get the students involved? We actually got to teach to our cohort during those days. So that was fun. We also did AE 413, which was with Dr. Ewing, and we learned a lot about program planning and more of the specifics behind how do you plan a program and what, um, what do you use. Favorite classes, <clears throat> of course, everybody's going to laugh, horse judging was one of my favorite classes. Not for the reasons that you think, though. So yes, I enjoyed horse judging, I love horses, I love looking at them, but it's a lot more than just the horses. And I don't think people really understand that. So I got to go to Ohio twice to judge at the Congress, and I also got to go to Oklahoma and judge at Worlds. 
So when you look at a class of horses, you have to step back and you have to look broad at those horses and you gotta look overall general. Then once you think that you got them all figured out, you gotta get closer and you look at them a little bit closer. You gotta look at this as your classes. What is the broad horizon that you wanna get through to your classes of students? When you get that broad horizon figured out, you can go in and you can work out the details, but you're really not gonna be able to work out the details until you go through it once. So you're gonna have that practice, you're gonna be able to look through it, you're gonna be able to add to what you believe is right and be able to just give a little bit more information each time you do it. It's practice, it's repetition, it's what we do in horse judging. Then I had an art class. And I like art, I like drawing. Sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not. That's how um, I feel, you know, when you go and you take on a class, one class is gonna be better than the other, but you're gonna have to step back and look at the details. I put this glass up because we had to draw a glass kind of like that when I was in art, and it took forever, and I didn't think I was ever gonna get done with it. But when we got done, we got to step back and we looked at it, and we're like, wow, we drew that. So I'm hoping that um, at the end of the student teaching semester next year, that I can stand back and I'm gonna be like, I did that, and I'm happy with it, and I did a really good job. I also took Biology 220 when I was at Mont Alto, and that was right when I was starting my college career. And I wasn't exactly into the whole college thing, really starting to work on it. It was hard for me, it was difficult. But I really, <coughs> truly liked the passion and the dedication that my biology teacher had. And I really strive to be that passionate and that outgoing for the students next semester, along with the rest of my career. Certifications. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a safe tractor driving, so I'll be able to teach the students um, safe tractor driving through a course um, and how to operate that. I also took a project Food, Land, and People, which we took through Shavers Creek, which was fun. It gives you a whole bunch of curriculum. It teaches you how to uh, teach about populations, um, food, and land. The name says it all. And then I'm also CPR and first aid certified. So don't try it now, but if something were to happen, most likely can happen. So then professional development. And we got the opportunity, awesome opportunity in July. We went to PAA and we got to uh, meet with our cooperating teachers, go to some workshops, really get some good professional development for ourselves. We also went to national convention, I think was the best experience ever because we get to go around with our cooperating center, we get to meet some of our kids. For me, it was most of my officer team for FFA that I'll have, so that was fun to be able to make those connections. And when I walked in later this semester to teach at my cooperating center, those kids walked in and they're like, hi Ms. Myers, how are you? I'm like, those are the kids we took to national convention. So it was very cool, it was awesome to see that they were excited for me to be there, which made me happy because I'm like, oh good, I made a good connection with them at national convention. Last year, or last, last year, last week, we went to Nashville and it was exciting. It could be, it was a little, um, overwhelming but it was awesome we went to a, I went to a ton of good um, workshops I went to a lot of vet science workshops because that's where I needed more um, ideas and more explanations on things so I thought that was pretty cool um, but these professional developments are things that I strive to continue with throughout um, my career then I went to internships and growing so I was a intern for the Penn State Extension Office last summer. The two summers before that, <clears throat> I didn't really focus on an internship that would get me to teaching, but I feel like that those internships um, helped me learn how to be patient and understand people from different areas or ideals. Um, I also figured out how to work with more of a general population of strictly men and their um, thought process when it comes to road construction. So that's a whole other story. But last summer I worked for Penn State Extension and it was an awesome experience. I got to work with kids from the inner city, I got to work with kids from the country, I got to work with kids from 4-H who have never been in 4-H. Um, and we did these, thing, these workshops at libraries every week, we did four a week. And we would always go and whether we had one student or ten students, they all had the same thing in um, in mind. They wanted to come because they were having fun the week before. They wanted to come to learn something just a little bit new. We did leadership was our um, idea of last summer. So it was really cool to be able to see, even though they were from different areas, they weren't like me or they were like me. Um, or they had different outlooks, they all came for the same purpose, which I thought was, was pretty cool. 
We also talked about a diversity um, in Nashville with Dr. Greenfield and he just had a step back. Like he really made me step back and think about things that maybe I do in my life or that we don't necessarily consider that we do that some other people might not feel included with. So that was interesting. So, am I prepared for student teaching? Thank you Penn State because I personally believe that I can be prepared and I will be prepared and I am prepared. So, I'll tell you a little bit about Kennerdale High School. So this is my cooperating teacher, Miss Abby Kernett. And we are the Rams, and I think it's cool that Kennerdale is, um, has like a blue and gold coloring because FFA color, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, I actually didn't realize that until I put this together, and I was like, hey, look at that, that's cool. <laughs> so location, we're in Fawn Grove, which is Southern York County. It's like 10 minutes away from Maryland, so we're way down there. This is the overall map of the entire school. Um, like the intermediate school and the multi-purpose fields and stuff. So we're way back in the back and the ag program is way back here in the back of the building. Um, so it's way off, you can't see it from the road, but it's fun drive. Classrooms, there's two classrooms there. Um, the main classroom I'll be in is more of an instructional classroom. It's with Miss Abigail Cornett. Um, I'll be with her. The other classroom holds the shop classes with Mr. Paul Traeger. And those are also the two teachers that we have. And then courses that I'll be teaching and going in through would be horticulture, animal care management, vet science, equine science. Um, there's an intro to ag. I will not be going into that, but that is one that Mr. Traeger teaches. And then there's a small gas engines, which I'll just be doing my sh one short unit on. So evaluating Kennerdale, we are supposed to look at Kennerdale um, within the chapter 339, which is something that I learned with Dr. Ewing. And when talking to Abby, the things that we could really think about, there's some definitely some gems and some ops. Some gems are the good, some opportunities, ops. So we talked about the weaknesses, and um, Kennerdale doesn't really offer a lot of um, industry certifications, which is something that they want to work on, they want to get there. They do have two articulated classes with Delaware Valley University, so the students can take those and they'll get credits. Um, they don't have a lot of SAE opportunities just because of the demographics of the area. Um, all depends on the connections you can make and who we can make connections with. And then we have an FF, uh, active FFA chapter. The administration is super supportive. They're just not 100% sure what an ag program should look like. So it's kind of hard to, see, um, to be able to explain. And then they have a very active um, advisory board as well. So what and when. This is what I'll be teaching throughout my weeks there at Kennerdale. Um, just to kind of give a little overview. So this is like the periods that it goes and then the weeks. So I'll be starting when I get there. I don't actually teach right away. So I observe for a week. And then the second week I start dairy cattle and then I start gradually making, um, working my way up until I have the full schedule. And then again, once I'm there for a couple weeks, then we gradually take it back down and I'll um, observe and talk to Ms. Cornett while I'm going through all that. Organizational system, something I'm still working on. Um, but <clears throat> we learned from actually uh, Ms. Janae McMichael um, that we she does a notebook and you put on your list on one side is your work and you do your to-do list on that side. On the other side is your personal and you put your to-do list on that side. Kind of keeps them separate and then it's all organized and that's strictly for the week. So I started doing that and I found it really helpful. I also did binders. So each one of my classes has a binder and that's broken down into the units that will be taught in that. Um, I'm still working on organizing. Um, I have a Google Drive as well. Um, that's being worked on being organized at this point. So my gems and ops for myself. Um, I think some weaknesses that I have are time management. I traveled a lot this semester, but I think I did well with it. But it's something that I still need to work on. I want to get myself in a more strict routine of I'm getting up at this time, then I'm doing this, then I'm going to the school, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to work on this, and then I'm going to just call it off for the day. So I really just need to work on my time management and how I want to portray the day each day. My organization, I'm still working on, but we're getting there. And then perfection. Dr. Foster literally told me the other day that I am being too picky about how I want to do some of my lessons just because they're um, most important to me, specifically my equine science stuff. So we're working on that as well, just to know that everything's going to need to be flexible. 
saying that, I think I can be flexible and I think that's a good strength because even though I'm going here or going there or I have different types of um, views or whatever, I can be flexible in how to, I want to change my system. It might take me a little bit to warm up to it and be able to understand it, but I can be flexible with it. Also, I'm very determined. Um, like I said, Dr. Rice opened my mind to the whole teaching aspect. And I think I'm at this point, I, saw, I stepped into this semester and I told myself I was going to do it, and I'm here. It might have been questioned sometimes, but I'm here and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to student teach, and it's going to be awesome. And I'm excited for that kind of experience to be able to go and step out, out of my comfort zone, but really own it. So I'm excited for that. Goals, I personally and purposely left this blank because... There's so many goals that I want to accomplish. It just all depends if I'm going to be specific that day or broad that day. And my favorite quote, not because Dr. Foster likes John Wayne, because I liked him way before I walked into Penn State. Um, I said that courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. And I have followed this for a very long time. Um, and I think that the beginning of the semester, the beginning of this college career, I stepped in and I said, okay, well, I'm scared to death to do this. I don't want to leave home, but I'm going to. Walked into this semester. Don't know how I'm going to do it, but I saddled up, I hunkered down, and I got it done. So I think it's pretty cool um, how much this quote follows me. And my goals are um, to just be the best that I can be if I want to be broad. The best I can be for my students, the best I can be for myself, the best I can be overall. So those are my goals. Lastly, the Elite 11. I'm pretty sure that's what we were called. My cohort has been entirely supportive of me. I know that I haven't always been there for my cohort at the beginning because I'm always at the horse barn. Um, but I truly do these people are awesome. They're like my family of my cohort. They're able to encourage me, have a support system for me, back me up when I need it. Um, and it's just, it's awesome to, to see us grow from where we started to where we are now. And I think it's pretty cool. So I want to just thank you guys for coming and listening to my final presentation. Next semester, I will be blogging like crazy about my experience. So if you want to follow me, um, I'll be on galloping into ag ed. And that's the little thing. And if not, you can look on Twitter for my hashtag for PSU Ag at 18. So thank you all. Round of applause for Shai. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. You did an outstanding job. Thank you. Let us take some questions. But as we remember, we're going to do the cycle. Give you time to think. I'm going to put you in a spot. We're going to come to the audience. Everybody's encouraged to ask questions. In the online audience, hopefully they can hear me indicating this time. And then to the teacher education panel, we'll start with Dr. Kerr. So first, to my live audience, who would like to ask the first question of Cheyenne? Go ahead. Cheyenne, you said that the school you're going to does not have a lot of SAE opportunities because of the networking in the area. Mm -hmm. And since you're <coughs> from York County, do you have any ideas of how you can help increase the networking in the area so that more students have SAE opportunities? Yes. So my ideal, when I walk down into Kennerdale, um, it's definitely going to be um, challenging because it's a lot of farmland. So being able to network with the people around, I might have to go a little bit further um, within the like the York County limits, just a little bit further outside of Kennerdale, to be able to talk to people for students that might want to um, have either like a cattle or a pig or goats, if they want animals, to be able to board their animals animals there, um, which I think is one of the big things. There's a lot of placement, so there's a lot of work stuff. So I think being able to just reach out to the community and ask around, um, having no fear of being turned down, and being able to talk to them, um, full-heartedly say, these are what we're looking for. Can you help us, or do you know somebody that can help us? Just being able to reach out and ask questions is my, my biggest goal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. Tiffany, could you please derive a question from our online audience? Yeah, this is from Evie Zaleski. She says, she loves your positive attitude and passion for teaching agriculture, but that with teaching, many challenges can arise. How would you motivate a student who doesn't follow your classroom expectations and isn't self-motivated? And what steps would you take to engage that student in class? So while Cheyenne thinks to reflect on that answer, Ms. Zaleski is a graduate from PSU Ag at 16. 17 
and is currently working for Davy Trees and did her student teaching at McGuffey. Okay, thank you, Evie. So, <clears throat> I know that it can be challenging for some students to be motivated to want to be there. Um, I hope that my enthusiasm and positive attitude can help them with that. Um, it might just be the question of do they need to talk about something? Is there something else that's on their mind that is keeping them from being engaged or active or motivated to do the classwork? Is there something that they don't understand? Is there something that I need to step back and question myself of do I need to reteach this information? Do they not understand it or do they just need a little help um, if it comes down to just they're simply not motivated you're just gonna have to sit down and have a talk with that student maybe during their um, independent work time during class and um, ask them you know is there something I can do to help you to motivate you to want to be a part of this um, I can also ask them where their interest lies if they have something that they want to do that we're not necessarily covering if I can find a way to cover it then We'll try to do that to incorporate all the students in their interests. Mm -hmm. Dr. Curry, <clears throat> Cheyenne, we have a very rich history in agricultural education, but we are not teaching the way we taught in 1950 in agricultural education. Agreed. Once you put your future goggles on and probably realize that you're probably not going to be teaching 20, 30 years from now mm -hmm. the same way you're probably going to be teaching next semester. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what, <clears throat> what, are, what are some challenges you foresee on the horizon, either for agriculture or just for agricultural education and teaching in general? And what are you going to do to adapt to that change? I think one of the main challenges that could possibly arise would be the use of technology. Um, being able to teach with technology, with everything going into more of a like everything's on social media or everything's within technology, being able to really utilize that. I know Kennerdale is a one-to-one -one school, so I hope that I'll be able to um, look at that. Looking on to the future, I think that um, you're really not going to be able to cut it strictly in class with technology. So I think being able to provide those hands-on experiences is going to be super important. Um, I also believe that teachers themselves, this goes back to my professional development, um, they really need to be involved and engaged and not be stuck in the mud about this is where I'm going to be, this is where I'm going to stand. And for me, like, I love learning new things. Sometimes they're not always the easiest for me to learn, but I'm, I always want to challenge myself to be able to step outside of my comfort zone and learn. You're welcome. To our audience, our live audience, this is the point where everybody avoids eye contact. Diego. Go ahead, Lauren. Okay, so you mentioned that the school board doesn't know about the ag program at Kennerdale. Um, what are some ways that you can work with the school board and make them informed about the ag program and what you're going to do to make it better? So, clarification, um, the ag administration um, doesn't necessarily know like what should what should be in an ag program. So they're super supportive of us, they understand um, but sometimes they don't always understand, uh, I guess you could say, like what that program should really look like. So I think being able to have the students be a part of that, to be able to go down and be like, oh, this is what I did today. This is really cool. Thank you so much for being supportive of, of us. I think just giving those examples of what we provide our students and what we give them the opportunities to do would really help them have a clearer picture of the agricultural program as a whole. Thank you. From our online audience. All right, we've got one from Zoom and one from Facebook, so we'll take our Zoom question. This is from Kevin Keith. He says that he likes that you want to be the best that you can be, and remember that the best that you can be will constantly expand, evolve, and elevate. You show a lot of growth from this past semester of experiences, and that is just the beginning of what you can become as a teacher educator. Do you have plans to regularly evaluate your journey as an ag ed professional? Well, Cheyenne, thanks on that. Mr. Kevin Keith is one of Cheyenne's virtual mentors. He is currently employed by the National FFA organization as a local program success specialist based out of Indianapolis, Indiana, with over 30 years experience in school-based ag education. So thank you, Mr. Keith. Um, I will definitely be evaluating myself. I always like to step back and really think about stuff um, from how, how I'm doing, where I've been, where I am now. And I think um, I'm going to challenge myself 
to evaluate myself more. I know that we'll be blogging in the spring, so being able to look back on my blogs will definitely be able to help that. But I personally think sometimes it takes me a little bit to really be able to step back and look at what I've done and look at what I'm doing to be able to really evaluate myself. So my challenge is, um, to bi-weekly evaluate myself instead of every week to harp on it every week to be able to go every two weeks and I really just want to step back and look and see well how did I do do I need to change something do I need to grow something um, do I need to change myself to be better I just <clears throat> I just need to take the time to figure out when I want to evaluate myself but I think every two weeks I think I want to sit down and evaluate myself and where I've been and where I'm going and what my my new set of goals will be. So. Very good, Cheyenne. Thank you. As we think about that, reflection can be both public mm -hmm. or personal, mm -hmm. and both are equally important. So thinking of a systematic way that every Friday or every day at this time and a journal that you could keep, not right in depth, just for your, it could be bullet points, and then to use that to guide you, I think you'll find very interesting over the course of your 15-week experience. But as your time management indicator says, <laughs> you would need to make an appointment like you're going to the doctor. Like, you're like every Sunday at 2 p.m. I do, uh, I'm going to open up that journal every two weeks. So think about it. Dr. Rice. So along that same line of questioning, as you reflect and you recognize areas maybe that aren't strengths or areas that you would like to improve, what are some specific platforms or tools that you can use to help cultivate your professional growth? So I really believe that ne networking is highly important. Um, there's some teachers that I've met throughout this semester that I think will be very good sources of help to push me in the right direction. Also with all of the um, places that we're um, able to get resources from this semester, I was able to pick out some that I liked or some that I could work with more easily, um, being able to make it into mine and learn the uh, the resources. Um, I also like to go um, like with horticulture if we go around to like different stores or um, different like growing or nurseries just to ask people like if they have any experience or anything that you know this is what I'm teaching like does this sound right do I need to grow is there something that's more important that I should be talking about um, just to be able to make connections and networking I think is probably going to be my biggest help because I like talking to people more than I like reading a computer so thank you personal connections matter we do have a question online up on deck is there one from the audience here okay right, this question is from facebook it's from sarah lang she said that she loved your horse judging and classroom analogy and she would like to know what would you do in your own classroom or even in the spring to include students from special and diverse populations so while Cheyenne thinks, Sarah is a junior in our program currently, who's no doubt looking to Cheyenne as a role model. Cheyenne, what would you like to share on that? So I really think, <clears throat> depending on the students that you're looking at, um, I personally see no difference. You have to look at differences in students. Let me rephrase that. I um, want you to feel included in my classroom. I want you to feel like you're welcome, you're allowed to come in. Um, from diverse populations, what I can say with that is I just want to be respectful of who you are as an individual. So if something is being talked about or I include something that might not necessarily go with your belief or your understanding, I would like that student to come and talk to me. I think it's highly important to be open with your students. They have to be able to understand where you're coming from because I want to understand where you're coming from so I think it's really important to just have that communication with your student and that understanding to make sure that you have that form of respect um, personally every student comes in with a clean slate so I'm not going to judge on who I think they're going to be until they are able to talk to me and communicate with me so I can figure out how to um, lay down my my information and how I want to um, run things so thank you Sarah Diane, I'm going to take this question, and Dr. Ewing, you are the last question from the teacher education panel. So I want us to go through an exercise where you evidence to me the power of the total school-based ag ed program and your understanding of it. I'm going to ask a question that's going to pull from your content knowledge in ag ed 311 and 412 
primarily, uh, reinforced through 413. So the question is that I know that you're passionate about equine science. So I'm going to start this in a series of four questions. The first question will be, I would like for you to name for me three three-week units that you would teach around equine science. So you can reflect and think on that. I want you to name three three-week units that you would teach in an equine science class at the high school level. Okay. So we had talked about it. I think that horse judging um, itself you can make it easily into a three-week unit. So selection and evaluation, got it. Mm -hmm. And I would probably primarily focus that on halter horses if we want to get specific. Okay. So my second one, I think it would be important to talk about management of horses. So you want to talk about how do you take care of them, okay. the full work that goes into them. Selection and evaluation of halter horses, production management, and what is our third unit? And then I think um, the third unit could be reproduction, um, looking into cycles, um, being able to understand um, the work and process that goes into um, breeding your horses, taking care of that foal, being able to foal out your horses, um, the nutrient that goes into that um, feeding-wise and time-wise. Excellent. Thinking of those three units that you've just identified, mm -hmm. I'd like to identify one specific concept that would teach or reinforce an academic concept. So if you were to look at reproduction, okay. I would go into like science and technology mm -hmm. because you really got to think of um, like your cycles, you have a certain amount of time. The science incorporated with different methods of breeding, um, the technology incorporated with that as well, I think is very important for the students to really think outside the box. We're not just talking about reproduction, we're talking about I science and technology. I don't disagree at all, but I'm going to push you to go a little deeper. I want a specific academic science concept. You could talk about biology. What? And biology is a subject. I'm going to get you down to a concept here. Something you might have learned in biology 110 or 220 that you would teach and reinforce, or in your high school biology class, that you would teach and reinforce through equine reproduction. Mitosis and meiosis. That's excellent. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, after we've done that, and we've got these young people fired up, how are you going to leverage and utilize the leadership laboratory of the FFA to expand on their interest in this field or profession or subject area of equine? So there's a horse evaluation CDE. Is that where you're going That's with this? Great. What is two things students do in that CDE? So there's a judging portion, which is just judging classes and giving reasons. <laughs> so they have to be pe prepared to talk in front of a single judge in a room by themselves, fully quiet for two minutes, roughly. Okay. A little less. And they have to be able to give reasons on why they picked, um, be able to stand their ground on why they picked that horse. This is why they placed it this way, and that's how they're going to go. There's also a portion of that CDE where they can, um, it, mostly it's a team portion, where they get a piece of paper and they have a scenario and they have to figure out it could be anything from breeding or nutrition or how to feed that horse, where they're going to have to sit with their team and figure out a plan of action for that specific scenario that's given to them. So we've taken this young person, they've run three excellent units, they've reinforced academic concepts, they're feeling great, they're fired up, they've competed in an FFA competition. Tell me how you could use work-based learning, our supervised ag experience, to continue to expand on that young person's interest in the equine area. I need two different examples of SAEs related to equine science. Okay. So it can be challenging with SAE depending on how far they want to go because it's very difficult to get your American degree with horses, as I well know. So for one aspect, you could do more of a placement. Um, they could go and work for a large animal vet, specifically an equine vet, which was cool because they can learn a chiropractor, um, or acupuncture, which I got to watch the other day, um, or just specifically just an all-around equine vet. So they can go and they can follow them. Placement of an equine vet. One more example, please. They could also do an entrepreneurship of their self, which is what I did and what I learned. So they could um, take that horse, whether they're showing, whether it's a pleasure horse, and figure out the expenses that they need for the horse, how they need to take care of that horse, how they're going to get money for that horse, and really be able to make a well-rounded experience. An entrepreneurship breeding project is what I heard you potentially have mm -hmm. as an animal. Thank you very much. You're Excellent welcome. Answer. 
Are there any questions from the audience? George, I have questions. How so, does that feel? <laughs> um, so Shannon, so you mentioned um, your your internships and your summer experiences over the past. How do you feel that your summer experiences have best prepared you for this spring semester as a student teacher? So again, my first two summers that I did um, really prepared me in the way of patience and being able to work um, with different opinions from individuals. Um, I will say that those individuals were all older than me, so that was um, a little different in the aspect of age-wise. When I look at Penn State Extension, that definitely got me ready because that's going to be what I'm doing in an informal way. So I got to meet students from all different backgrounds. I got to be able to work with them and understand where they're coming from, um, where they want to go, and actually be able to encourage them to keep doing what they're doing because it's awesome what they're doing. Um, and I really think that prepared me in a way to be able to get up and talk in front of people, plan out and organize um, different workshops or scenarios that we have, and be able to um, formally run certain types of meetings. So I think it was definitely helpful. Thank you, George. Dr. Ewing, you have the bright and privilege of the final question of this demonstration of knowledge. This does not happen often. I will take full advantage. <clears throat> this month, when all was said and done, <laughs> Did you know I was going to ask this one? I hated this. I okay, when all of a sudden done, <laughs> what do you want students, colleagues, administrators, parents, and community members to say about you as a student teacher at Kenner? Yeah. All those individually with their own separate response. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Right, what do you want the community to <laughs> Okay, so all of them together, um, I'm going to say that I really just hope that they look at um, me as a good network, somebody to go to um, if they need help with um, maybe some of my strong points. I also want them to say that they had a good experience and if they see me again, be like, oh, that's Miss Myers, not that was a student teacher that we had in 2018. <laughs> so I want, I want them to be able to um, feel like they've really taken something away um, as much as I hope that I feel like I take a, that much away from student teaching as well. Um, I want them to look at me as a role model for the students that they had in that program and be able to trust me with their students um, that they're gonna learn um, valuable information and where they wanna go. And I really just hope that I encourage those students to keep going on the path that they're going um, maybe brighten their thought process on ag ed a little bit and get them excited for whatever is to come in their future. Thank you. Let's Thank give you. Give a round of applause for Cheyenne. Thank you so much for coming. We need to complete this evaluation process and clean and clear the room, but there are refreshments available on 214, and our last presentation is at 345 with um, Mr. Beecher.